because of where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. Hey family, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us with what I believe is going to be a transformative and very powerful, empowering time of sharing. Normally, I would take you into our sanctuary or some sanctuary where I've ministered across the country uh, to a message that I've previously preached, but I've really felt arrested in my spirit to really share with our television audience that which God has given me over the last 90 days or so. I've been really uh, teaching about this concept called the kingdom of God. And maybe you have never heard of it, but it's fine because I want to take these next uh, few uh, times of sharing and I want to really unlock and unpack for you the kingdom of God. I want you to be a part of the kingdom of God if you're not already. If you are and don't know it, I want you to know the benefits of the kingdom of God. And I really want us to get into a understanding of of life and and what God does and what part he really plays uh, in our life and the differences between uh, the kingdom of God and, and what you may think. So let's just jump right in and pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your word, the strength of your word. Now, Father, bless us and bless our time today. Let someone's life be changed forever in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Well, Luke chapter 17, 21 it's a very powerful statement there. It says, you won't be able to say here it is or it's over there for the kingdom of God is already within you. Now, you might be asking and those of you who are asking, well, what is the kingdom of God? That sounds crazy. Well, let me kind of break it down for you. Most people, when we think of Jesus and and, and church, we think about salvation. I, I need to be saved or I'm not saved or I don't believe in salvation. And that's fine. Uh, but that's only one part. And I want to suggest to you that uh, Jesus didn't die on the cross for us to just be saved, but he died on the cross for us to live an incredible life. And so most of us have been presented the gospel in a way as if uh, it's a book. The Bible is a bunch of stuff that we shouldn't do. But I want you to consider that the Bible is really not about what we can't do, but the Bible is really about what we can do. The book of Philippians even says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so I think it's important for us to get some perspective. John 10, chapter 10 says, the thief comes, talking about the enemy or the devil, uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I have come, this is Jesus, that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Now, this abundant life that God came for us to have, it is more than just eternal life. We don't have to die and go to heaven to enjoy abundance. I mean, think about it. Uh, if that's the case, then we should just die when we get saved uh, or when we give our life to Jesus. But the reason why Jesus came was for an abundant life. And I believe that it is my job, it's my assignment to help you live an abundant life. I want you to know this right away. There is no limitation but the limitations that we create. That because of Jesus, once we receive him as our Lord and Savior, he does more than just gives us this master key to go to heaven. He unlocks the master key for us to have an abundant incredible life. And I'm not just talking about a life where we have high moral values or a life where we don't do anything wrong and we do everything right. No, I'm talking about the life where all your needs are met and you live above the struggle that you don't have to rob from Peter to pay Paul or take from this to take care of that, but that you literally live a life where you have the desires of your heart. And if you walk with me, I want to just kind of take you through the word, through the Bible and just kind of show you what the kingdom of God is. Well, let's be very clear. Jesus did die for the church. I mean, of course, he, Peter, according to scripture, asked him, he asked Peter rather, who do men say that I am? He's, Peter said, you're Jesus. You, you know, you're the son of God. And then Jesus replies, well, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So of course, the church has its place and the church is a very real thing. And the church is not physical buildings, but the church is people. Ecclesia is actually the word used for church. And so uh, we understand that, or if you don't, now you do. But 
the church and the kingdom is something totally different. They should work together. They are part of each other, but it's still different. Because the kingdom of God is what Jesus also came to establish, and it is what he is the king of. It's what he rules. It's what he governs. That's why you often, or maybe you haven't, but you will hear uh, him referenced as the king of kings and the lord of lords, because Jesus is actually the king of a kingdom, a kingdom that God established that is eternal, uh, and it will reign forever, according to scripture, but this kingdom is also uh, given to us for us to manifest things in the earth. In other words, let's be clear, the kingdom is spiritual. The kingdom is also a mentality, but the kingdom is within us. So I want you to think about this. So, you know, God has healing. He has favor. He has all of these resources. And the question often becomes, well, how do we get them? And most people think, well, if I just pray, then God answers prayers. He does answer prayer, but he doesn't always answer prayer with what we pray for. He He answers prayers based upon, uh, you know, our need for the answer. But then our lives look like the principles that we operate in. And so you're going to hear me reference kingdom principles, kingdom precepts, kingdom laws. Well, those are just really big words for how God wants us to do things. And most importantly, God's process for manifesting things. Now, of course, we've, we live in the world. According to the scripture, we're not of the world, but we live in the world. So the world has a way of doing things. You go to work and you get a paycheck. That's not how the kingdom works. The kingdom works a totally different way. And according to scripture, the, the things that God has for us is better than what the world has for us. And when I say better, I'm not talking about less than. I'm talking about more than. The world wants you to have a car. God wants us to own the car lot. The world wants you to own a house. God wants us to own the whole neighborhood. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. The they that dwell therein are us who are a part of the kingdom of God. And so I want us to understand first and foremost and just make this declaration with me. The kingdom of God is within me. Come on, say it. I, I know it may sound weird and and, and, and crazy, but what you're going to discover is faith <laughs> requires you to do some crazy stuff. So the kingdom of God is within me. What does that mean? That means that the power of God, the strength of God, the resources of God are already in me. Now, what does that mean? Well, John chapter 18 and verse 36 says that God's kingdom is not of this world. So if God's kingdom is not of, of this world, it does something for me if his kingdom is in me. Here's what it does. It removes all impossibilities in my life. Now, I know I just said something that's probably got you saying, what in the world is... No, I'm telling you that there is no impossibility in your life. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, with man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Think about that for a minute. With God, literally all things are possible. This means that there is absolutely nothing that you can do that blocks you from being able to live your best life. So there is no sin. There is no mistake you've made. There is no thing that you've done. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how rough it is. Your life can literally change right now. Does it change when you hear this message? Well, that begins the change, but you've got to hear it. You've got to receive it. You've got to trust it, and then you've got to act upon it. What do you mean by acting upon it? I mean making a decision that I'm no longer going to live based upon the limitations of this world, but I'm going to live based upon the impossibilities of God. So the world says your credit isn't good enough, and God says, but my credit is. The world says that you're too sick to be able to do this. But God says, man, I'm the healer. The world says you will never be able to purchase this. And then God says, you don't have to. I already brought it. I want to give it to you. See, the kingdom of God is another way of thinking. It's a new way of thinking for many of us. But it's all God. And this idea of God has become so 
religious and church to where we really don't understand, man, that God died. He sent his son to die for me to have life. But what kind of life? More abundantly. So I want you to declare this. I'm moving from impossible to possible. Come on, say that with me. I'm moving from impossible to possible. What's possible? What's possible is for me to have whatever I can think. Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above that which I can ask, think, dream, wish, wish or even imagine. Now, I want to suggest to you that our imagination is a gift from God. And the world has really kind of done us an injustice because the world says, man, you use your imagination to create fantasies. But may I suggest to you that you use your imagination to create realities? Okay, you don't you don't believe me. Let, let's let's talk about it for a minute because Disney World was Walt Disney's imagination. He imagined that place, and then all of a sudden, it manifested. Or or maybe someone like Kanye, who uh, comes from pretty much nothing, and he's a billionaire. Well, what where do these? How do these people live these kinds of lives? They live these kinds of lives. Because they dare to believe that what they imagine they can have. Can I suggest to you that everything that we see comes from the unseen? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 teaches us that nothing manifests or exists in the physical realm until it exists in the unseen realm. The, 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 the thoughts that we have, the creative ideas that we have, all of these things produce what we have. This chair that I'm sitting in was someone's idea, the camera that we're using. It was someone's idea. This television network that you're watching us on, all of these things were someone's ideas. And I want to ask you a question. Whose idea do you live in? Are you living in your mother's idea for your life or your father's idea of your life? Are you living in other people's idea of your life? Are you living in God's idea for your life? Well, here's how you can answer that. If you're not living in abundance, you ain't living in God's idea for your life. Because God's idea for your life was for you to have all of your needs met and for you to have the desires of your heart. Can I say that again? God's idea for your life was for you to live with all of your needs met and for you to have the desires of your heart. Y'all with me? You still with me? You want to live this kingdom life yet? Let's talk about it. So every impossibility that we have, every limitation, is really just a created thing in our imagination. Now, you got to understand that this world has systems in it. Man, we've got political systems. We've got financial systems. We've got educational systems. We've got all of these different systems. And the job of those systems is to turn you into someone or something that needs those systems. Where the kingdom of God is something that's on the inside of us that says you're not limited by any of those systems. That, that greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. That, that literally means that you have the power on the inside of you to produce what the world says you can't produce. It takes us back to Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Think, think about that for a second. With God, everything is possible. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 through 38, it says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is indeed plentiful. But the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and thrust laborers into the harvest. I believe that that's why we're talking today. I believe that's why you're watching. I don't think it's by accident or coincidence that we're sharing. I believe that we're sharing because there is a harvest that God has for you. And he wants you to enjoy that harvest. And I've got a question for you. Are you ready for the harvest that God has for you. Well, if you are, I need you to do something real quickly. Do it right now. Once you go to www.
www.clhines.org. And when you go to www.clhines.org, I want you to click that partnership tab for them. Now, let me be clear. It doesn't cost you a dime. It's not about money. It's about being a part of a community that we're creating. And the only reason why we're creating this community is because we're better together. I want to help you live your best life. Listen, every morning, Monday through Friday, I'm live on social media, whether it be Facebook or Periscope or YouTube, wherever you are, we're there. And I'm teaching every morning at 7 a.m. And we're praying. What are we praying for? We're praying that your life will be the best that it's ever been. And I want you to be a part of that community. So go to www.cohans.org. Go do that really quickly. And I'm going to just kind of give you some more information. We're going to take a little quick commercial break, and I'll be right back to share with you some more message on the kingdom of God. What's up, family? I want to take this opportunity to invite you to increase 2020. I'm in my home, and that's exactly where you can be to be a part of this amazing conference. We've got keynotes. We've got panels. We've got worship. We've got absolutely everything that you need in order to take your life to the next level. These are unprecedented times, and we want to do three very important and key things. We want to empower you. We want to inspire you. And most importantly, we want to push you into the increase that God has for you. Register now. It's absolutely free, and I can't wait to see you there. Well, hey, family, here we are back again, and I want to encourage you that as we are talking about the kingdom of God, I want you to realize that there is something very supernatural that is happening in your life, that you are coming into a message that I believe that God has really revealed to us for such a time as this. Not spooky, not weird, nothing crazy but it's serious. So I want you to understand something. Even as you're hearing this, it's important for you to recognize that your life is changing. It's transforming. Transformation doesn't happen overnight, but it does begin now. And I want you to realize that as your life is transforming, it's time for us to start making some very different decisions. So the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom is already on the inside of us but it requires us to do some things now what it first requires us to do is to make a decision that we're no longer going to live based off of the world's systems but that we're going to live based off of the principles of the kingdom of god that there are some laws that the kingdom operates in and when i say laws i don't want you to think uh, from the perspective of like policing, but I want you to, to, to understand that truth has consequences. So when we do the right things, the right things happen. And of course, when we do the wrong things, the wrong things happen. Well, the kingdom is a set of principles and a set of laws, if you will, that on the other end of them, have the results that produce the abundant life that we desire. So it's important that we understand that because sometimes we don't have enough discipline to really produce the behavior that produces the results. And in no way, shape, or form am I suggesting to you that being just, just being a good person uh, will produce a good life. And don't get me wrong, high moral values and all of that is important and significant. But what I'm showing you is a little bit deeper than just religion. As a matter of fact, it's not religion at all. It's not religious at all. As a matter of fact, God's idea for the kingdom was for the earth, not just for religious circles. That God wants the kingdom of God everywhere. He wants it in the educational system. He, he wants it in entrepreneurs. He desires it in all these. See, God is bigger than just church. Man, God is the God of everybody. And he wants all of us to be able to represent him or represent him in a way that people would want to know him. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, for God so loved the world, the world, that means you. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever would believe in him would not perish 
but have everlasting life. Hear this. God had an idea. He had an idea for the world. And because he had an idea for the world, he established something in the earth. It's a process. It's called seed, time, and harvest. Now, we can't talk about the kingdom without talking about seed, time, and harvest. But I want you to consider seed from a different perspective. Maybe you've been in church or you've been around and you've heard of seed from the perspective of money. And yes, money can be a seed, but seed in the truest form really just represents a beginning. Everything has a beginning and then everything needs time to get to its ending. Does that make sense? Everything has a beginning, so seed, but then everything needs time to produce the harvest, which is its ending or its best self. So, so you are a seed, but you just need time of doing the right things, and then the harvest is an abundant life. Your business needs a beginning, and then it just needs time, it needs sacrifice, it needs giving, it needs selflessness, it needs patience. Y'all get what I'm saying? It needs joy, but then at the end of it, it's going to be this company that you've always imagined or dreamed. Well, such is the same with you. God had an idea. God's idea was to make you in his image and make you in his likeness. So what the kingdom does is the kingdom is our ability to move like God moves and to operate like God operates. Well, how does God operate? Well, we know from the very beginning when it says that God created the heavens and the earth, he created them with words. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1, pretty much the whole chapter, it breaks down how God used word, words to create the world, which gives us a very significant point, and that is that words are not just for communication, but words are for creation. You have what you say. This is why so many people experience so much negativity in their lives it's because of their words. Why do we say the things that we say? We say we can't have it. We say we won't go there. And then we allow people to say, now watch this, words are seeds. So when people say words to us and, and we don't combat those words, they, they get sown into our hearts. And when they get sown into our hearts, over time, they begin to manifest. Watch this. And we start believing what people say. So I want you to hear me. I want you to allow What's me. Up, family, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to increase 2020. I'm in my home and that's exactly where you can be to be a part of this amazing conference. We've got keynotes. We've got panels. We've got worship. We've got absolutely everything that you need in order to take your life to the next level. These are unprecedented times and we want to do three very important and key things. We want to empower you. We want to inspire you. And most importantly, we want to push you into the increase that God has for you. Register now is absolutely free and I can't wait to hey see family, you. Family, welcome back. And my prayer is that our time together has been a blessing. Listen, it's not quite time to go yet, but there's some things that I, I want to make sure that, that we're able to do. Of course, I've, I've, I've done everything in my power to try to get you to go to our website and partner with us. doesn't cost you a dime. But we just want to be able to have you be a part of our community. We're going to have your phone number so we can send you inspirational text messages and, and let you know all of the amazing things that we've got going on. Uh, of course, you've heard about our conference. It's a virtual conference, so you don't even have to get out of your bed. I mean, you can literally just go to your phone or computer or television. And you can be a part of our virtual conference. It's called Increase uh, 2020. I'm really excited about it because, it's, number one, it's our first time ever doing something like this. But then secondly, uh, it's going to give us the ability to really go in depth. I mean, this little bit of time that we have is really not enough. But it gives me the opportunity to go really in depth and show you Increase and how to activate it. Did you know that Increase can be activated over your life? Absolutely. And I want to show you how to do it. Well, all of that is at www.cohans.org. And then uh, I want you to find us on social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on 
uh, YouTube, I'm on Periscope. All you got to do is just put in Pastor Chris Hines and, you know, I'll come up and you can be a part of our community. I'm always posting, always doing uh, videos. Of course, we're together every morning and, and so many different things. And then, of course, uh, you can be at our, you can join us at our church. If you're not in our local area, it's all good. Go to the website and watch the live stream. But every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m., and then every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., of course, we're teaching uh, such an amazing spiritual community that you can uh, be a part of. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to be a part of it. If this teaching on the kingdom has blessed you, I want you to email us and let us know uh, because I want to teach on it some more. I want to get us deeper into it. But the Bible teaches us that the kingdom is not just about words, but that the kingdom is also about power. And so I want to take this opportunity to pray. And if you have any prayer requests, let us know, uh, because I'm praying daily. Pray for my partners daily. Pray for those who are part of our community absolutely daily. But I would love to be able to call your name out. Can we pray? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that every person who is watching me right now, you have a purpose, you have a plan, you have a destiny, and you have significance that you have placed on their life. And Father, even now, I believe that there is someone whose life is on the line. Someone is not quite sure what they're going to do and where they're going to go. But even now, you're giving them clarity. Father, someone was at the edge. They were on the verge of taking their life. But now that they've heard that they can have abundant life, they're making a decision to live for you. And so, Father, I thank you. And to that person who doesn't know Christ as your personal Savior, but you've heard us talk about the kingdom and you now want to have that abundant life, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. I realize that without you, I am nothing. So I dedicate, I give my life to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I will live for you. I will trust you. I will work for you. I will serve you. And I thank you for saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want you to know that you're saved and uh, you are now a part of the kingdom of God. And most importantly, you're, you are a part of the family of God. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have a good Bible-believing church. You can always become a part of our church. You can always be a part of our spiritual community. And I want you to know that we love you. We're praying for you. Our vision is very clear. Live better, love God, serve people. We're praying for you and we'll see you next time.